News 25 is brought to you by Bees Embroidery and Garment Printing. Specializing in custom and personalized decoration of gifts, garments, and more. Call 775-727-9444. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-990 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, local residents celebrate the holiday during a community brunch and a vehicle crashes under a trash truck. News 25 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Hundreds join together for a holiday feast. It's Wednesday, December 26th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Linda Wright spoke to us yesterday at a brunch held by the Holiday Task Force for the entire community. We're here at the Holiday Task Force community brunch for Christmas. We had a breakfast casserole we, and um, French toast sticks and biscuits and gravy and fruit and cake and cookies. How many people do you think you've served so far? Mm, close to 300. You have Santa here? Santa's here, and uh, he's been talking to all the kids and adults and giving out presents to everybody and stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. And we've been giving away coats and hats and blankets to anyone that's in need. Yeah, we had Pastor John here from the Episcopal Church. He came by and did our blessing for us this morning. The next time we'll see the Holiday Task Force back in action? Yes, we will be doing our annual Easter picnic in the park, and we do that in conjunction with PDOC. If anybody would like to donate, can they? Yes, they can uh, do monetary here at the Coalition and, and drop off a check or money and just let them know that it's for the Holiday Task Force, or they can donate food items at any time to us. And one injury was reported as a result of a rear-end collision today on Mesquite Avenue. One person was transported by ground ambulance to Desert View Hospital as a result of a two-vehicle accident that occurred this morning on Highway 160 in Mesquite. Officials tell News 25 that a sedan rear-ended the back of a Pahrump Valley disposal truck. At the time of the collision, part of the sedan went underneath the trash truck. No one inside the trash truck claimed any injuries at the time. Nevada Highway Patrol is conducting the accident investigation. And more news right after this break. You're watching KPVM News 25, local coverage you can count on. Welcome back. Well, a vehicle and a trailer were destroyed by fire over the holiday weekend. Just before 5.30 on Christmas Eve, we were dispatched a report of a fully involved motorhome. Uh, there was initial concerns as it was discharging ammunition within the structure. And it was also relayed that there may have been a dog bite that occurred on the property. So we arrived on location, we found a fully involved motor home, which was actually used as a fixed structure. Also, a automobile which was closely parked next to the motor home was also involved in fire. It was mostly consumed. There were some components in the drivetrain that were still intact and they still have some salvage value. The primary residence was protected by crews as they arrived on location. They made quick control of the fire and extinguish it within about 20 minutes after arrival. The dog bite was unrelated to the fire. It was a neighbor who had approached the scene to, in assistance and was bit on the boot. All the inoculations were accounted for and the dog did not need to be removed. Well, the first accident reported officially inside the roundabout since they have been constructed on Highway 372 and Black Road was a single vehicle on a wet highway and resulted in no injury to the driver. So we were dispatched to report a motor vehicle accident and with the vehicle, it was a one vehicle accident involving the roundabout. And apparently the vehicle traveled off of the roadway, went up on top of the, uh, the roundabout and then was in a fixed position there. There was one person that was medically assessed and I don't believe that they were transported. An emergency crews responded to a report of a home fire early this morning. 
Yeah, just before one o'clock this morning, our dispatch for a report of a structure fire in the area of the very south end of Oak Ridge. Uh, our station three was first on location within minutes of the dispatch. They found fire and smoke showing from what we call the C side of the building, which is the rear of the building. Uh, it was on the underside, which was what, uh, consistent with the initial report. Our crews came in, removed that particular area, and skirting around quickly extinguished the fire, and there was no further extension. Most of the damage was held just to the underside corner, and again, the fire the fires did a great job, got that extinguished in such short fashion that there was no real damage to the structure. And another home fire on the south side of Pahrump occurred on Friday night on Heritage. On Friday, approximately 2,100 hours, you dispatched for a report of an unknown type fire in 1100 block at East Heritage. Our arrival crews found several fires that appear to be fueled by flammable liquid. One fire was located directly up next to the house with fire extending to the double wide manufactured dwelling. There was an immediate pickup truck exposure. Crews arrived on location, used a dry chem extinguisher to extinguish each of the flammable liquid fires and also utilized the uh, inch and three quarter hand line to cool the primary dwelling. The fire was brought under control several minutes after arrival. It was found that the fire originated when repairs were being made to the pickup truck in the area of origin. There were no injuries. And the Nye County Sheriff's Office conducted another year of what KPBM has named handcuffs or ham. We might give you a ticket, but since it's the weekend before Christmas, the sheriff here has something else for you besides oh, a ticket. Oh, God, right? yes. The Nye County Sheriff's Office conducted their annual event, Handcuffs or Hams, in which the Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies pull over drivers for minor infractions and give them a holiday ham. Nye County Sheriff Sharon Morley invited along Commissioner Donna Cox this holiday season. We even came across a family on Ambush Street and were able to give them a holiday ham and some toys. More news after this break. News 25 is brought to you by William H. Jackson Injury Attorneys. Injured? Get Bill and Robin, your local injury attorneys. Well, deputies and volunteers delivered much needed items to the less fortunate families throughout the county this past week. The Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and auxiliary units delivered gifts, including bikes and groceries, to those in need in our community. We caught up with Sergeant Alan Trump with the Nye County Sheriff's Office, who is a major donator and who helps coordinate these events during the year. Shrimp tells us about a grandmother who has permanently adopted her five grandchildren and the donation made to that family. The sheriff and I and some of the deputies just decided, to, along with Commissioner Cox, to come out here and make sure this family has everything they need for Christmas. The, the understanding is the parents are not involved now. Grandmother's having to raise all five of these kids. So we just wanted to make sure that they had a Christmas. It didn't look like they were going to have a Christmas. Um, even the power company is helping them out with power bills, and so the power isn't turned off. So this is something that had to be happening. The sheriff's department came by today and brought Christmas to us, and it was the most beautiful gift ever, and God is good. So um, it was going to be, there was going to be a Christmas, but um, we believe, you know, that it's Jesus' birthday, and um, it's not so much about getting but giving. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much what we do. But Christmas was going to be a lot less, and now it's a lot more. <laughs> That was a wonderful event. Mark's Service Center is still going strong after 15 years in our town. We caught up with the owner, Mark Costanzo, recently at his business to find out more. We've been supplying to counties, school districts, and homeowners with high-end janitorial supplies and doing quality repairs for 15 years here, but I've been doing it 40 years total. Yeah, we have everything you need to clean your house, everything you need to clean your toilets, everything you need to clean anything and everything that's dirty. We carry industrial janitorial supplies that you use your own water. Instead of buying down a water product, we have the product you actually add your own water to, so you're not paying for the water. You use your own. It's kind of more cost effective. But also, we repair vacuums and sewing machines. I've been doing sewing machine repairs, industrial and domestic, for 40 years. Wow. I've been doing vacuum cleaning repairs for 40 years. Um, I've been here 15 years, and when we moved to Calif from California here, we had no idea we were going to get back in this business. If you're going to buy a, like a $139 throwaway from Walmart every year, that's a lot of money in about five years. But if you buy a good vacuum and we maintain it, like we do free service for life on most of the vacuums we sell, 
you'll have that vacuum 20 years. So you buy it once, and when you break down the cost over the 20 years you've had it, it's pennies, and you're not throwing something away. And our vacuums have metal brush rolls, metal bottom plates, you know, replaceable filters that are HEPA that really filter out the poof dirt. Yeah, we've got poof dirt, don't we? Oh, man. The poof dirt keeps me in business with our microfibers, with our everything you need to clean your house. We have from microfibers to janitorial supplies to good vacuum cleaners. You can win the battle of the poof dirt if you just have the right equipment. Our job is to try and help you work smarter, not harder. So we're putting together videos that will teach you how to use our chemicals, how to use the equipment, and little tips on just how to keep the dirt and dust out of your house. Because, you know, dirt and dust is germs and bacteria. And, you know, dog dander rotting in a bag, bagless vacuum in a dirt cup isn't my idea of clean, you know. <laughs> so we teach people how to actually maintain their stuff and clean it and service it and make it work and last longer, you know. What line of vacuums do you sell here? We sell Miele, which is a German vacuum, Sibo, which is German. We sell Lindhaus, which is Italian. And we sell the Rickhar, which is uh, American, mm -hmm. mostly American. It's uh, some some globally sourced components, it yeah. says on the sticker now. But, you know, that's, that's the way of the world now. Do you sell sewing machines? We sell sewing machines. We specialize in Elna sewing machines, which is made by Janome. And uh, they're great machines, and they have a 25-year warranty. They come with five years free service. You're right here off of Irene Street and Highway 160. What's the hours? I think you're they're right behind you yeah, right here. Yeah, I'm open Tuesday to Friday, 9 to 5, mm -hmm. Saturdays, 9 to 3. Um, we're closed Sundays and Mondays, mm -hmm. and we'll be closed, of course, from Christmas to New Year's. Take a little time off, but um, we do pickup and delivery uh, for the disabled, so uh, there's a lot of elderly and uh, in this town, and there's some that can't drive, so we go and pick up their equipment, service it, and bring it back to them. And we're here to help. It's uh, 537 M A R K. It's 537 Mark. Uh, Easy number. Is there a Facebook page or website? Yeah, we are markservicecenter.com on Facebook, and we have videos and pictures up there, and we're going to be posting new videos every day on how to clean and what to use and all the little tips and whatnot. Well, park officials say a large number of people that are visiting Death Valley National Park this week, despite the number of limited services due to partial government shutdown. The Oasis at Death Valley, Stovepipe Wells Resort, and Panamint Springs Resort are privately operated and are remaining fully open with lodging, camping, fuel, and restaurants available. Most hiking areas remain accessible to the public. Due to the lapse in federal appropriations, the National Park Service is not providing visitor services such as trash collection, restrooms, facility maintenance, nor public information. Visitors are asked to take the trash with them when they leave. The winter holidays are the busiest times for most of the park. After just two days, there's excess in trash in the park and there's piles around the trash cans. If you have reservations in the park, Please be aware that there is no guarantee of your reserved campsite. The, the county commissioners discussed a new marijuana cultivation and production facility to be built on Betty Avenue here in Pahrump. The BOCC report is sponsored by Jim Marsh Automotive of Las Vegas, Kia, Chrysler, Jeep, and Body Shop. Application for a special use permit to allow marijuana establishment located at 750 East Betty Avenue, same parcel number, same owners, etc. This item was uh, before the board. I was unable to attend the meeting. Um, we, uh, in the meantime, we've had discussions with the state because we were concerned about, some of us were, that the state had opened an application period. We did talk to the state. We uh, did not, in our discussions, uh, asked the state to withdraw anything. They gave these permits. They have everything in order that I can see. Uh, I am concerned with their choice. Uh, I don't know how they're going to get up in 11 months. It's not my job to run their business or suggest their business, but they've got a lot to do there. States issued a provisional certificate. They've been through the uh, proper channels to make a motion to approve the SUP on uh, uh, SUP for 2018-00. Uh, 055 and uh, SU 2018-00056. Second, and with a comment, I want the applicants to know that I really appreciate the time. Uh, we have provided all of the drawings, the civil drawings, training gradage. We've done all the percolation tests, correct? And we have everything in place to be submitted to NDEP for a commercial well on that property. 
um, as far as it being in a utility area or not in a utility area. Um, part of our requirement would be that they receive permission from the utility in order to drill the well or put a septic or anything in. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. Four to one. News 46 Weather Cam is brought to you by Glenn Lerner Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Well, as we take a look outside on that Glenn Lerner Weather Cam, we'll have Michael Donahue to tell us about what's in store for this week's weather and this weekend. It's been kind of interesting. We'll return in just a moment. News 25. Weather is brought to you by Harump's Best Kept Secret, Q Barbecue. Try it for yourself. Low and slow. Cued for 16 hours. Hello and welcome to a post-Christmas edition of your weather. I'm Michael Donahue with today's highs. In Pahrump, 56 degrees, Amargosa 59, 69 in Death Valley, 54 in Beatty, 42 Goldfield, 39 in Tonopah, 42 in Fallon, and 44 in Fernley. Tonight, 31 degrees in Pahrump, Amargosa 32, 43 in Death Valley, 31 in Beatty, 24 in Goldfield, 22 in Tonopah, 26 in Fallon, and 29 in Fernley. Tonight in Pahrump, we're expecting mostly clear skies. Our low and our average are both at 31 degrees. Sunset at 4.35 p.m. Winds out the east-northeast at 5 miles per hour, gusts up to 9, and our humidity at 41%. Tomorrow, once again, mostly sunny skies, a high of 52, a low of 33. Our UV index is real down there at 2. Sunrise at 6.53 a.m. Winds out the north-northwest at 10 miles per hour, 18 mile per hour gusts, and 31% humidity. For our seven-day, on Friday, Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday, we're expecting sunny skies with just a few uh, short, brief interruptions of clouds in between. Our high temperatures, we're going to look like we're mainly going to be in those low 50s. On Friday and Saturday, we're going to dump down into those high 40s, just at 48 and 49. Our low temperatures are looking at a similar pattern. We're mainly going to be in those low 30 degree temperatures, but Friday and Saturday, we're going to dip down into those high 20s, just at 26 and 29 on Friday and Saturday. So back, so with that, we'd throw it back to the desk with Deanna. Hi, nice to see you back, Michael. And everybody else, we hope you had a wonderful holiday. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. That does it for this edition of News 40, News 25, actually. Um, we'll see you back here again tomorrow night from all of us here at KPVM-TV and Ace Country Radio. Good night.